Welcome in everyone. Today we're going to be learning how to perfect your form so that you can increase your results. Now you may be asking yourself, well, how does perfecting your form increase your results? We've been learning that our muscle mass is our metabolism and our metabolism is what's going to be burning our fat and giving us that beautiful shape. And so we're either doing weight loss or we're doing fat loss. And there has been a very drastic difference between the two of those that they're actually conflicting. And so being able to learn how to get faster results by doing working basically smarter, not harder, because we're either going to be intentionally speeding our metabolism or there is a possibility that if we're not doing anything about it, we could be reversing our metabolism. And so um, that's what the, uh, the key indicator here about perfecting your form is that you can actually have that mind-muscle connection so that when you are lifting your beautiful weights, that you're using the right muscles so that you're starting to actually build those sexy lean muscles to therefore give you that better fat burning potential, okay? So um, this is what we've been going over in our one-on-one uh, -on -one session. So I'm excited to kind of change my scene here. So instead of at my office, you guys can see now in my front room with me. So what I want this to be is very interactive. So if you have the ability right now, I want you to go ahead and jump on the floor in your workout section. If you've got booty bands available to you, grab those because we're actually going to be really, really using these tonight. We're also, if you've got a dumbbell, perfect. And as we accelerate, we'll start going into those barbells to make sure that we're lifting the correct form, even with the barbell. So I've seen common mistakes that women are doing with these particular moves. And today we're gonna to be going over the exact ways that we can start to really perfect your form to start increasing your results, okay? So I'm gonna kind of give you a little sneak peek about where we're starting to um, dive into today. We're gonna to go into this. First one is going over floor exercises. This is what we're gonna be mainly covering today. So the banded clams, the hydrants, the kickbacks, the glute bridge, and then also into our core. We're gonna be going in all into that section as well. These ones, you can also see there's an extension where it's also, we'll get to these in just a little bit and kind of learn, well, what are those about? And also, this is a fascinating one that I've been teaching our accountability members about fast-tracking results because a lot of us are stuck in the endurance type of training. It's kind of usually when we start getting into fitness is uh, that we start leaning a lot towards the cardio, which in fact could actually be the opposite type of training that we're trying to do in sculpting and toning. So uh, we'll be learning a little bit about that. And then tonight we'll also be good diving into progression. And um, if we have a little bit of some weaker knees, we'll kind of dive into that as well. So that will be kind of fun as far as, as far as what we'll be going over tonight. So we're gonna go back up here to our floor exercises and we'll start there. What's going into our form tonight, you guys? Again, this is going to be interactive. So I want you to go ahead and join me. The first one we're gonna be starting off with is, is the banded clam. So if you've got your band available, I'm going to choose level two tonight. Feel free to choose whatever one you want. And when we put it on, I've had so many questions of people asking me, well, should I put it closer to my knees or should I put it closer down to my booty? Which one is the best option? My suggestion, just it's honestly either or, up by your knees is going to make it a little bit harder. And when you bring it all the way down more towards your hips or your booty is going to make it just a tad bit easier. So you'll kind of allow that to, um, as you're going through the movement, you kind of tell me where you want it. But I'm generally kind of keep it in the middle for now. Okie dokie. All right, so what we want to do is go ahead and set ourselves up for success. So find yourself onto your floor right now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring it to a wider screen so we can see this here. What we're going to do is we're going to do a clam together, all right? So very interactive again, like I said, is we're going to go ahead and go into our clam. Now a common mistake that I see is that we go into it and we're not really sure exactly where to put our knees and our feet, okay? So then I ask someone, well, where are you feeling this exercise? And I hear a lot where they actually say right here onto the leg. <laughs> and right in this position, that's what I feel. So have any of you made that mistake where you're thinking it's more of a leg burn? Well, actually this one's technically supposed to be for your glutes. So in order to then switch that adjustment, what we wanna do is bring your feet a little further back with those knees. Maybe we tuck those feet in a little bit, kind of depends. Now see if that changes the adjustment of it. If you also focus that your glutes have to do the work, that's what's called mind-muscle connection. And as soon as you feel the glutes, 
I want you to go ahead and let me know. So that particular muscle, you guys, is gonna be the medius. What it does is it attaches from your hip and it goes to the top portion of your booty, giving you that nice, good lifted look. So clams are phenomenal, not only for your lower back as well. So if you have SI joints and things like that that are really um, having giving you some issues of low back, when we strengthen our glutes, can it improve your back? Absolutely. All right, so let's dive into the other side because of course, I have heard that some people, some members, feel one side but they don't feel the other. So let's make sure we feel both sides, okay? So let's set ourselves up for success. Maybe you have to bring your feet back a little bit, whatever you have to do, in order to feel now have the mind-muscle connection. Try to tune into the glutes, see if you can activate that medius. Now what I'm gonna even do is teach you a little bit too. Slow down the movement. Hold it up at the top and squeeze, and then slow it down on the way down. Those are your negatives, and a lot of people forget that. They end up crashing on the way down. But that's part of the amazing part of your exercise, you guys, is the negatives. That resistance against the band is half of the work, all right? Awesome, so when we got it, if we did not get it, some adjustments to be made is sometimes I see that people are turning their hips towards the ceiling. Ooh, do not do that. Keep the hips really straight up and down like this. Also what I see is people kind of crashing into it like this. So bring that shoulder right under, or that elbow underneath the shoulder, lift yourself through the rib cage, and you're actually gonna be working your core as you're doing this move. Now let's go ahead and go into our next move. You guys ready? So if we go back to our screen here just to kind of see our next one, we are gonna be working on the hydrants and then kickbacks next. So here we go. Let's go into our hydrants. So this one is a tabletop position. And um, we're gonna use the bands, but we're also gonna be start to kind of elevating and going into some of the weights here in just a moment. So have those nearby. You want the hands right underneath the shoulders. You can have them flat or up on your knuckles, whatever feels best for you. And you want those knees right underneath those hips. So what I do is I start with my knees about hip distance apart. Some people put them together, but I think that it's best to actually have them more hip distance. So start already in that uh, distance there. From here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna stabilize yourself on one knee and you're going to bring it out to the side, okay? Now keep in mind, we want to try to keep those hips parallel to the mat, which means don't open your hips up like this to the ceiling because then we're gonna lose a lot of that activation. So it's only like a 45 degree angle here where you're really gonna feel it. Now again, don't crash down in your negatives. All right, what that means is you're going up and then you're just crashing down. You're going up and crashing down. No, really feel it on the way back down, okay? Let's get even here, and let me know if you're feeling it, where you're feeling it, all right? So comment down below, where are you feeling this particular move right here? Wow, I'm already, I'm already dying over here, you guys. <laughs> it is shocking what a little band can do. And all of these, again, are our floor exercises. I will show you um, all of our other pages that we go through, our one-on-one -on -one that we've been taking our members down of the different pages as well. All right, so here's the next one. We're gonna go into our kickbacks. Now you can do a kickback with your booty band on. It works just as good. But for all those that have long bands, I want you to go ahead and grab that right now because I'm gonna demonstrate how we can do it with one or the other, okay? Well, maybe you can have both on for just for double the fun. Okay, so common mistake I see is that when people go into this, they're putting the band on the mid of their foot. When really, we actually want to feel that heel, because remember, the heel is where we're going to get the glute activation, okay? So you can have it in both hands, or you can have it in one hand, whatever feels best for you. Or the other option, you guys, is you can attach this band to something, like underneath your couch or bed or something like this. Very easy to interlace and kind of do a connection there. Okay, so here we go into our kickbacks. What we're gonna start off is again, making sure that we're in that tabletop position. Our knees are about hip, hip distance apart. And then we're gonna go ahead and flex our foot so we can hold on to that band. Otherwise, if we're pointing our foot, we're gonna lose it, okay? So keep it flexed. And from here, we're going to take it down and then squeeze it back up and lift. Okay. Common mistake is that when people come back down, they bring the knee to the other knee. One of the things we're gonna definitely be learning is there's all of our exercises that we can be going from rest 
to contract and then rest and to contract. And that's really not our effective range of motion. So what we want to do is stay in that activation and then go back up. So notice I'm going very slow and then I'm going to push it in my positive. Slow on my negative and really push through on that positive, you guys. And let me know where you're feeling that. What part of the glutes do you guys feel this one? Now notice you are getting a core exercise while you guys are doing this because you're having to hold your core up through this. Otherwise, it would look like this. We'd be dropping, right? So we're having to engage the core. This is a phenomenal one for giving us a great looking booty, some great looking legs, and a nice good core. Strengthening all of these. All right, so what part of the booty was that? Because that was different part of our booty than the first two that we did. So this one is mostly what's called our maximus, you guys. So this one that runs the majority part of the booty right here that's here. So if you call that top, then yes. We have the side top, which is the first ones that we were doing, right? Those were the medius, and we were working the maximus on that one. All right, you guys are doing so good. All right, let's dive into the next one. It's gonna start getting a little bit challenging here is the glute bridge. And if we can, this is the time to either grab your dumbbells or your barbell and of course a booty band. You guys having fun yet? Are we learning something new? Okay. Now I really want your glutes to work for this one. So you can go up a level. Let's go up a level with each other. So again, probably about mid thigh or if it is kind of a challenging band, you can kind of move it up a little bit, okay? All right, so glute bridge, let's dive into that. A common mistake that I see on this one is um, going to be that they're pulling from their low back instead of their glutes. I did that one for years. And what I noticed is that when I started to lift heavier and heavier weight, the more and more I start filling my back. And so that's when you really have to make sure that form is perfect now while we're still in the bands or smaller weight because as we start lifting more weight to start seeing more results, if we're not feeling the right activation, we can really give ourselves injuries, which we wanna stay away from, right? So let's dive into this one. The glute bridge, which eventually leads into the hip thrust, are absolutely my top favorites. And if you know this about me, I, I utilize them all the time in our workouts because they're not only phenomenal for your core, legs, and glutes, they're phenomenal for this whole uh, posterior chain of yours, okay? What I was doing was I had this space and when I was pulling through, I got done and my low back was just in pain. And I was like, what is going on? So what we wanna do is rotate and tilt that pelvis and then we're going to push up with those heels and wow, what a difference you're gonna feel. Okay, so the next part, before we start adding weight, we wanna make sure we're good here. A common mistake I see is people's feet are clear out here. That's gonna be working kind of more under here. So if I bring my heels up, now we're gonna start to feel it more in that lowered awesome part of our glutes, okay? So phenomenal for those that are like, I need help in my lower booty. This is a good one for you, okay? Okay, so now that we know our feet are closer together, we have no space in our lower back. So my next question I have for you, when we go into our bridge, do we go all the way down to the bottom and then go back up? Or do we stop a few inches from the bottom and go back up? Which one is it? Do we go all the way down or do we leave a few inches and go back up? So we want to stop before we get to the bottom. We want to have a cut. We want to have some space because we want to be able to still be in that glute activation. That's called our effective range of motion. So slowing down the movement, let me know what you guys are feeling this. Are you starting to feel a difference than all that kind of like random stuff like this before? You know, sometimes we're in these like endurance classes that are just teaching us to go so fast and to sweat it out that we kind of don't really learn the correct form. I didn't for years and then I just wasn't seeing awesome results. And so it really is about slowing the moves down. All right, so now let's add some weight, whether you've got your dumbbells and if you don't have a barbell, I'm telling you girl <laughs> or boys, all right, whoever's watching, men or women, very important to make sure we're utilizing weight. Build muscles, increase your metabolism, to shred fat and get that nice, good sculpted toned look that we're looking for. Our clothes will fit better, our energy 
would be able to get bone density. I mean, the list goes on, right? It helps fight against osteoporosis, you name it. Okay, so let's go ahead and now try it with the barbell. So the first step is take the, the space out of your low back. Make sure that your feet are a little bit hip distance apart or you can go a little further with them. Make sure that your feet are nice and close to your booty. I like to kind of bend them as far as they kind of can go. And then from there, I push my heels into the ground. I send my glutes up. I only stop and so I'm about a couple inches from the ground and then I go back up. That's it. Now I'm in my effective range of motion. Now what I like to do is add a little pulse up at the top to really give the best of this. So if you guys are feeling this in the right spot, then I'm gonna mark you as an A+. If you're feeling this in your back, then we have something to say. Now, will you feel your back? Yes, because this one is working your entire posterior chain, which means everything from here to here. So you are going to be getting that nice, good kind of like, you see this curvature in your low back you start to get, and then this kind of curvature that goes out, you get a nice, good shape that builds in the back here, okay? Okay, now let's dive into the next one. I'm already sweating over here. Whew. You guys feeling it? Okay, so now we're gonna go into abs, all right? <clears throat> we got only three, and then I'm gonna dive into some of the other more advanced ones. But we're gonna start with basic. Okay, so the next one is our plank dips, all right? You can do this with a band on, but it's not required. Okay. Okay, so plank dips, set ourselves up. You guys ready for this one? All right, I want you to feel this one. So if we're a beginner, we can just be on our knees and our elbows, but walking it out so that we go into a plank. Or if you're advanced, we can take it up onto our toes. All right, so um, plank dips, what I see a common mistake is that when we're going into a plank, we're just really taking the heat on our back. We're dropping too low. We think, we have to imagine this like straight line. When in reality, it kind of looks more like this. You're bringing the core up a little bit because you have to activate the core. So this, I'm feeling my back. This one, I'm feeling my core. So I want you to feel it. You're gonna know your perfect spot for that, okay? Whether you're a beginner or advanced, you'll feel it. Okay, once you get to your perfect plank, then all you have to do is just rotate slightly, not too crazy, just enough so you can really start to feel the entire part of this the core. Now what I mean by entire part is you should feel it kind of like from here to here just by doing that tiny little rotation. You don't have to drop your hip all the way down, but just enough to really feel it going from one side to the next. Okay? All right, good. If you felt it good, then you passed off, all right? All right, next one is we're gonna dive into the reverse crunches. Okay, so reverse crunches is going to be pulling from that lower core. And uh, what this is, we're gonna bring the knees up first to start here. And what it is, is I just want you to think of tilting the pelvis, almost like you're taking the tailbone off the ground. Now you can do this by not really thinking of your muscles you use but I want you to have the mind-muscle connection and connect to your lower core right now so that you're just going to pull and lift up. So lift up. And once you feel that lower core, let me know when you do. I'm looking at my comments to make sure you guys are feeling it, but it will be a nice, good burn. Now I'm gonna take it a step further. If we throw our balance off by just putting a dumbbell in one hand, and do the same movement, I want you to see if that stability muscles kick in just a little bit more. Now you can challenge it by bringing it up a little bit more over your head, a little out to the side. You can have some fun with it, but it's gonna make it really challenge, okay? The other option you can do here is straighten the legs and we're gonna take the heels right to the ceiling without trying to bring our feet up over our head. It's just straight up. Now it's again, working this lower section here and you're just taking the tailbone up off. Now the goal here is not to crash to the mat. So watch as I slowly focus on just controlling that move. Instead of crashing.
feel it. And I've got stability muscles having to kick in. And now I'm, I'm, I'm in my negative going slow. And it's the best burn ever. Okay. All right. We got another one. You guys ready for the next ab ex exercise one? I have filmed quite a few videos on this one, so I know you guys should get this one. When we're doing both hands, you guys feel it. All we're doing is just using momentum, and we've been taught that our whole life. But what I really am feeling is that my lower back is gonna pop out of place eventually. So what I like to really focus on is to slow it down. Feel it on one side, because what's happening here, you guys, is our stability muscles, which is our core, is on fire right now. Try it. It's the best workout ever. Now switch it over to the other side. Whew. I am feeling more of an activation and a burn right now of holds. And that's the cool part we learn with each other is taking the traditional moves we've been taught and finding better ways to start seeing better results. All right? So compound exercises is the next one. Um, learning about just picking up the barbell correctly. I see common mistakes of our clean and press all the time. Um, three different types of deadlifts or three different types of squats, really diving into those hip thrusts and learning those a little bit more. I have a lot of women that are terrified of lunges. They're feeling it all in their knees. Should we feel it on our knees? The answer is no. So I'm very excited as I'm taking women down, understanding different components to change your body to then start feeling it more into your glutes and legs rather than your quads and your knees. So great there. Um, next one we have that I really like going into is isolation exercises. These ones are really tough for women. Those B stances, have you ever heard of those where it's like single leg squats, but it's a B stance? Um, but phenomenal. We will be diving into um, single leg uh, hamstrings into our challenge that's coming up. So you guys, um, the challenge that you're in, the next leg workout is going to be utilizing some of these isolations. So if we're not doing it correctly, we can't be adding more weight to then be increasing that muscle. So very, very important we make sure we're doing these right. And then the last one here is elevated exercises. Taking your workouts just to the next elevation by, have you ever done an elevated lunge before? Where the front foot is elevated? Girl. Those are just my favorite. I love them. I love them. Okay, so different kinds there. But let's dive into I just, um, we're going to kind of close up here and I'm going to leave it open here for any questions you guys have. But I want to just dive into the types of training, what the ones we kind of commonly get stuck in and how we can really start seeing faster results. So endurance is where our goal is just to like run a race or to just not get winded when we walk upstairs. And so a lot of us, when we are thinking of trying to get sculpted and toned or even essentially losing weight, we're jumping on the treadmill or counting our steps or the bicycle or the Peloton, et cetera. And um, we're finding, recent studies are finding that, yeah, those are great for your heart and great for endurance, but not the best training style if you're trying to sculpt and tone and fit into your clothes better. So all of us have just been putting so many hours on that treadmill, come to find out that's just kind of keeping us in a different type of training. Great for your heart and your endurance, but if we want to start seeing some awesome goals and to actually fitting into our clothes better, let's lean into the next two. That is called hypertrophy, and that is the strength training part. This is where you're actually going to see that the reps and sets, uh, the, they change. The, the reps are a little bit lower. You can notice that the sets are a little higher. So those are a little bit interesting. And this is where you can start utilizing to start lifting more weights. And that's why it's crucial to make sure to have the right form when you start implementing hypertrophy and strength training so we can start fitting into our clothes better. Start to see that? So it's less of this fast stuff that we've been t teaching, right? This stuff. Less of the endurance and more on strength and endurance and strength and hypertrophy. Now, power is not the type of program we're in. That's the type of one or two sets, and you're pulling like 500 pounds. That's more for um, when the girls are like, oh, I don't want to get big and bulky. And I'm like, well, we don't do power lifting here. So <laughs> we don't get big and bulky because that's one to two reps. It's a lot different of, of repetitions and as far as weight goes as well. 
So um, ways that we progress without increasing weight. So you know here at Booty Bands and Barbells, we don't focus only on lifting more weights. We do have 10 other ways that we start to dive into to look at areas that we can start to improve together. Maybe that's changing up those pauses, those reps and sets. Maybe that is changing up um, the isolation. So instead of always just doing the same thing over and over, we start to change it up with each other and to create that plateau. All right, lots of love, you guys. Have an amazing rest of your evening. Hopefully you got something that was really valuable off of today and we continue to keep learning and growing with each other weekly. Lots of love. Bye, everyone.